Find all our courses at Minded.com. In this video, we are going to have a nice overview of what is upcoming and what is waiting for us in the later chapters, because we are going to talk about four quite broad concepts, and it is going to be organizational theory, design and change, and then we will as well talk about organizational structure and culture. So as you can see, we are going to have one main definition for the organizational theory, and then we are going to talk about organizational structure. And this is also how the rest of the videos and the rest of the chapters is going to be structured. And then later on, we will talk about organizational culture. And finally, we will talk about organizational design and change. And I did a, I did a small mistake here. So we have a design and change. And you will see why I have chosen this order later on. So let's begin. At first, we have our organizational theory. What is it that we are studying? This is the study of how organizations function and how they affect and are affected by the environment in which they operate. So we have some organizations. So let's draw some organizations. So let's say, let's say this is our organization. And now what do we have secondly in our definition? This is our organization. Now what do we have second in this definition is the environment. So this organization is operating in some sort of in some sort of environment. So let's say this is our environment. And now there are two ways. At first, this organization is functioning and it is going to affect the environment around itself. So it is affecting the environment. Maybe it is producing some products. Maybe it is creating some commercials for uh, the products. So essentially, there are many ways how organizations affect the environment around themselves. But of course, there is going to be also the other way around so that organizations are affected by the environment. So there is going to be also the other direction. So environment, maybe government is creating some laws that are affecting how this organization is functioning. Also, the demand can change when number of customers is changing. So you see, it's a, it's a two way relationship, but it is most important to remember that organizations operate in some environment. And this is the focus of organizational theory studies. Now, let's get to these three main blocks. And the first one is the organizational structure. This is the formal system of task and authority relationships that control how people coordinate their actions and use resources to achieve organizational goals. So we are going to have some formal system of task and authority relationships. And you are going to see a lot of sketches such as this one. So that at the top, there is some CEO of the organization. Then there are going to be some lower level managers. So let's say this is manager one, this is manager two, this is manager three. Then we are going to have some employees, some workforce, which are maybe over here, then maybe over here are two, and then here are maybe one, two, and three. And now we are going to have this task and authority relationship. Those are these, these connections between these our members of the organization. So CEO has three subordinates, one, two, and three. Then this manager has three subordinates. And then this guy has two. And then the, here we have three subordinates. So these red lines, those are the task and authority relationships. Because as we have mentioned, this is a manager. This is a manager of these three employees. So he has some authority over them. And of course, he's going to delegate some tasks to his employees. So this is basically the part about the organizational structure. How should we structure our organization in this manner so that it operates the best? Then secondly, we have organizational culture. This is the set of shared values and norms and norms that controls organizational members interactions with each other and with suppliers. So let's imagine, let's imagine that we have some organization. So somewhere here is our organization, 
organization and then of course this our organization is going to have some set of shared values and norms so for instance one of such values or norms can be hard working hard working then there can be smiling we want our employees to smile a lot then maybe drink a coffee or drink a lot of tea and coffee and now there is going to be some organizational member so let's say this is this is our organizational member and then this member understands or tries to understand these values and norms which are in our organization and our employee is going to interact with some customers so let's say this right over here is our customer and what is going to be happened is the interaction so and i will change my brush so there is going to be some interaction between our employee and the customer so interaction and now this these shared values and norms are going to be uh, influencing this interaction so maybe this our organizational member will be hard working to really satisfy the need of this customer and will be smiling at him or her so that, that's what we call the organizational culture. We are trying to create values and norms that will influence positively these kinds of interactions. So those were the two quite the main concepts. And then at the end, we are going to sort of connect these two concepts together and we are going to have organizational design and change. And now you will see why they connect here because this is the process by which managers select and manage aspects of structure and culture so that an organization can control the activities necessary to achieve goals. Now look at this. Here we had some formal system. Here we had some formal system. Here we had some set of shared values and norms. But here we have a process this is going to be a process so you really can imagine we are going to have a nice models which will talk about organizational change so that you can imagine that organizations will try to increase their effectiveness so you can imagine that there is some some current level of efficiency efficiency within the organization and now managers will want to increase the efficiency with which the organization operates and this is what we call the organizational change and in order to really create this change and increase the effectiveness within the organization we will need to change both the structure and culture of the organization so we will need to change and this is also highlighted within this definition we have a structure and culture so what is necessary to understand from this video is what we call the organizational theory and then that there are three basic building blocks within this study.